Hello, hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to start a series of videos about a real world project involving electronics and in particular op amps. Because, I mean, it's nice to talk about op amps, op amps or transistors in theory, but it's nice to see how they work in a in the real world uh, so that you can put into practice what uh, what you see otherwise it's kind of useless i mean how do you use those op amps in the real world that's the that's the real question okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a series of videos about uh, pulse induction metal metal detectors I'm not really into metal detectors, but I think they are very interesting to study because, I mean, you can easily build one. You can easily build one and it's uh, it's not too difficult. Uh, and it uses uh, op amps quite a bit for different tasks, in including uh, small signal amplification. It uses... Uh, transistors as switches it uses op amps as integrators so there are lots there's a lot of interesting things going on with metal uh, metal detectors even if you don't like the idea uh, so i'm i'm going to focus on the pulse induction pulse induction type of metal detectors i think because i think it's kind of cool and if you look okay so if you look on this LT Spice uh, thingy here. Yeah. This is the basis of uh, pulse induction when using metal detecting. So you have a, a battery, so it's just a battery, so it's just a DC battery, like, uh, I don't know, like your AA battery or whatever. So th you have your battery, you have a switch that can either be switch that can either be open or closed there don't worry about this for now but this is to control the switch with a pulse but just think of it as a switch that you open and close manually then the circuit goes into your inductor so that would be your coil that would be the coil and in parallel and you're going to see why there's always going to be a resistor which is called a damping damping resistor because otherwise this thing is going to oscillate and you will see that in, in the simulation and that's it so that's your circuit so the battery let's see what i said here so yeah uh if you yeah so i'm putting instead of putting the res a resistor here i'm putting like a series resistance of what is it one milliohm. The coil is going to be 100 micro henrys. Uh, the resistor, the resistor for now is 100 ohms, but we'll uh, we, we're gonna see that we need to lower 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 it lower it a bit to avoid the ringing. And here I have a pulse, but the pulse is only to control the switch. So what I did is I did, what did I do? Okay, so it's a pulse to simulate, to simulate the opening and the closing of the switch. So V initial is minus one. V on is plus one. You have a delay of one millisecond. Rise and fall, we don't care. So it's on for 100 microseconds and the period is what, 10 milliseconds and I only do one cycle. But in real life, it would be a real pulse. So you would have, uh, I don't know, like uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be off, on, off, on, off, on. So it's going to be off for a certain, uh, it's going to be more off than on. So it's going to be off for a while, then on, very, very short period, off for a while, on, very short pulse, 
of etc. So you would have, uh, I don't know, maybe one, one kilohertz frequency, something like that. But we can look, we, we can have a look at how it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to look first at the, let's look at how the, the pulse looks like. Okay, so that's your pulse. So here, basically, so the pulse controls the switch. So here, at the minus one, the switch is uh, open. Here, at plus one, the switch is closed. And then it opens again. So in real life, you would have a pulse that uh, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, blah, blah, blah. Or more exactly, open, close, open, close, open, close. But here I'm showing just one cycle to simplify things. Okay, so that's your uh, that's your pulse. And that controls the switch. Now, so now let's look at the voltage at the coil. So that's the voltage at the coil right there. Okay, so uh, so here the switch is open. Here it's closed and here it's open. So let's get rid maybe of this one. And this is what the the voltage across the coil looks like. So what happens is that, so here the switch is uh, open, then the switch closes. So you are, you are uh, closing the circuit. So what happens is that the voltage is going to rise instantaneously, instantaneously to the uh, voltage that the battery uh, provides. So this is VBAT, V battery. And then it's going to exponentially, exponentially go down to whatever resi to a voltage that is uh, that depends on the total resistance of the, the circuit. So that R series basically. So it goes down like this. And at this point, which is this point here, the switch opens. So what happens uh, around the, the coil? So when the switch is open, assuming there's nothing before, nothing, there's no magnetic, magnetic field, but as soon as the switch closes, a magnetic field builds up around the coil. And at some point, so it builds up and then it, it becomes constant. So here you have some magnetic field that's constant. And as soon as you open the switch, that man magnetic field is going to collapse. And that collapse, which is very, very fast, is going to create a, what's called a flyback, flyback voltage in the coil. And that's what you see here. So here, if you look at the V battery, it's only, uh, it's one volt. So this is one volt. And as you can see, the flyback, flyback voltage goes down to minus six. So it's, so if you had like a 10 volt for the battery, that flyback voltage would be, I don't know, minus 60, minus 70. So it's quite a large voltage that gets generated in the coil. And what happens is that if, if the coil was an ideal coil, you would get the flyback voltage here. You would get that flyback voltage going here, and then it would go back to zero in an instant. So it, go, it goes down, and then it goes to zero. And that's it. That's the end of the story. But a real coil has uh, some capacitance. It has some capacitance. There's always some parallel capacitance in the, co in the coil. It creates like a LC, LC tank, and an LC tank is gonna do this, it's gonna oscillate. So you get those oscillations. You get these, those oscillations. And this is a problem for a metal detector because you want, you want the flyback voltage to go back to zero uh, as fast as possible. So you want to get rid of all that ringing. 
So here in, in this, and that's, that's why you use a damping resistor. So here the damping resistor is set at 100 ohms and obviously it's it's still too large so you need to bring that dumping resistor to something smaller um, i think i don't know let's let's bring it to 10 just for see what happens Okay, so here you can see, so this is your flyback, flyback voltage and the oscillation have been dampened quite a bit, but you still have a little bit of oscillation. So here it's called under, under damp, damped. What you want is critical damping. You, you want the thing to go like this. To go like this, you don't want it to go past the zero. So, try, trial and error. Let's put it to, let's say, uh, 7. I think that's the, the right one. Yeah, it's probably still too much. But let's, put, let's go to 5 and call it a day. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so yeah, so here you can see the so it's called the flyback the flyback decay. That's your flyback decay. So this this is what you would get if there's no metal in the ground. But if there if there were metal in the ground, what would happen is that the metal would there would be a magnetic field created in the metal that would counteract the other magnetic field that was uh, generated in the coil. So what's, what would happen is that if you have a metal in the soil, that the flyback, flyback decay would be changed. Instead of going like this, like here, it would be, the decay would be uh, delayed a little bit so it would go like this and then it would like go like this okay and the whole idea behind the pulse induction metal uh, detector is that what you want is to measure this decay what's the decay around here what's the decay around this time is it here in this case there's no metal or is it a bit lower around here? And that would mean there's a metal. And that's the whole idea. That's the basic idea of the pulse induction. Once you understand that, then everything is built around that. Because what's going to happen next is that, well, first, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, is that you need to amplify this signal. Because the this variation in the, in the decay is very, very minute. It's very small. So you need to amplify this signal. And then you need to figure out, oh, well, you need, we need to sample around here. So you need to figure that out too. You need some kind of timer to sample at this location. And you also need to figure out how to remove like the effect of the, the earth magnetic field. So in that case, you may want to use an op amp as a differ differentiator like differential differential amplifier and then you're going to use a, an op amp as an integrator to gather all those uh, samples that you take it's not complicated but it has uh, quite a few little small modules of things to do that are very interesting to look into because they involve uh, op amps used in different fashion and they also, they also, it also involves uh, using transistors as switches. So I think this metal detector project is a very good uh, way to learn about uh, op amps and transistors when they are used as switches. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here. And the next time we're going to talk about uh, what is called the preamp, which is basically how we're going to amplify 
this uh, flyback decay so that we can uh, measure the difference between what's happening in the decay when there's no target and what's happening when there is a target that me means the decay is modified so the value of the voltage here would be different okay so i'll see you next time bye